Welcome to Certain Point of View, your first step into a much nerdier world. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. And now, your hosts, Ben Milton and Addie Thomas. Hey, Nerf Herders, I'm Addie Thomas. And I am Ben Milton. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about uh, a, a Netflix series that was just randomly sort of recommended to me. Uh, ben checked it out before I did. A bunch of people in a Facebook group of ours checked it out. It's called the OA Brand New Netflix Series. Uh, both of us enjoyed it and have <laughs> thoughts about it. Uh, but before we get there, I uh, wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how you can join us, help us with the podcast just a little bit and be part of our Patreon team. Ben, can you tell us a little bit about it? So podcasting is a fairly inexpensive media outlet. Like when you compare it to like our backgrounds are radio, right? Like radio costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, on a daily basis. Like the, the radio station I work at, I think it's, uh, you know, somewhere in the realm of $50,000 a day is generated at that radio station at one of the radio stations that I work at. So it, it, it takes a lot of money to do media. Now, the great thing about podcasting is it doesn't take a lot of money. Our overhead is crazy low. Uh, but there are uh, you know some expenses that we have, and there are some things that we'd like to do that do cost us a little money. We would like to create uh, more video stuff. We'd like to do you know some different events and things like that, T-shirts, all, all sorts of really good stuff. But it takes a couple bucks to do that. We're not going to lie. Now, you know, we're perfectly happy to continue to do the podcast for free. We're totally committed to that. The podcast will always 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 be free uh and, and we're committed to that we do this show if nobody was listening and you know thankfully people are so what we're asking though is if you feel like it and you want to throw us a couple bucks and you'd like to help us out with some of the overhead that we have and help us create some of the new stuff that we would like to do things like video uh creating this not just a podcast but also making this a video cast uh and help us you know spin off some new shows uh case aiken has a new show that we're helping him spin off uh we're talking uh to some other people about helping them start podcasts well all that kind of host and, and stuff like that costs money, and we'd like to be able to cover that. So if you'd like to help us out with that, Patreon is a fantastic way to do it. It's all on our website. If you go to certainpov.com, click on the support tab, you'll see a Patreon link. There's a video there that explains Patreon, exactly how it works. It's totally safe. It's totally secure. Uh, and, and they have a great reputation. There's lots and lots of people in the podcasting industry who use Patreon as a way to support their art and a lot of other types of art as well, too. So if you'd like to be one of our patrons, we're going to give you all sorts of really cool inside behind the scenes stuff and do special events with you and stuff like that and if not you can continue to listen to the show just like you've always done and you know nothing will ever change about that so again go to certainpov.com click the support uh button and then uh patreon will be in there and you can find out everything that you need to know about it from there exactly even if you don't join patreon you're still a nerf herder one of our nerf herders for so, sure uh, yeah we, we'd still love for you to be part of the conversation and we'd still appreciate if you share this podcast with a friend of yours again the website certainpov.com. all right the oa i so first off, I just want to say, like I, every time I heard someone talk about it, I see I didn't see it as the OA. I saw it as the OA, and I kept on thinking, well, I don't think this is a Green Lantern thing. I don't. Think <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did the same thing. I'm not the only one. I was like, really? Are we? We're telling the OA star? Interesting. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess there's a story there. I don't know what it is. It seems like you need like a little bit more time with the Green Lantern Corps for that story to matter. But all right. Yeah. Uh, but clearly, it has nothing to do with DC or the Green Lantern Corps. Um, I'm not even sure story. what it has to do with <laughs> after watching that series. It's so good. It's, you know, I, I, uh, someone recommended it to me. They, they sent me a message and they said, and I'm not going to out them, but they know they're a listener of the podcast and we may have them on at some point in time, but I'm not going to out them. And they said to me, they said, uh, you really need to check out the OA. And oh, when I'm you not do, surprised someone told you that because and it, when, it, 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 it no, definitely listen, both our wheelhouse. Oh, for sure. It's in my wheels, but they go, but when you watch it, you need to have some mind altering drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, um, okay. Like now I'm intrigued. Like before I was like, oh, the, OA. like I heard, I'd heard a couple people say like, oh, the OA, it's really great. But then they were like, yeah, you need to like, like eat some edibles and stuff like that to, to watch this show. And I was like, 
All right, go on. Tell me more. <laughs> you have my attention. So I didn't. I watched it completely sober, and I'm glad I did because, man, what a trip. What yeah, a I don't great think I, trip. I don't think I could have trusted anything I heard if, if I was high while watching this particular show. It is – I'm just going to give a quick spoiler free pitch for this show. If you want a show that has everything spelled out for you, this is not it. <laughs> you, like this is, it, it has a very ambiguous ending. It's, and it is very, it's very metaphysical. It's very psychological. It's, it's, it's absolutely out there. Um, like, it's got yeah, a little yeah. M. Night Shyamalan thrown into it. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. That final well, maybe, episode? Maybe. That final maybe. episode? Or maybe. Like a, I don't know. It's I got a little bit. My, yeah. my interpretation isn't very M. Night Shyamalan-ish. Well, <laughs> so, just, just the final event that like spurs on the five coming together. Like oh, yeah, that's a very M. Night Shyamalan thing. Yeah, they're just like, what? Where did that come from? Like, right out of the, out of the blue, yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's it's interesting. Very metaphysical. Very. If you're into like, uh, the, it, it, it kind of reminded me. Like, I kept on thinking of a show I, that I only watched the first episode of called Touch that came out a couple years ago. That was about string theory and like how all of our lives are kind of interconnected. Because uh, and and is that uh, what that show was about? Uh, Touch the one yeah. the, the one with Kiefer Sutherland yeah. and the kid who plays yeah. Bruce Wayne now. That that was that was what it was supposed to be. Uh, about I don't I only watched the first episode I I it didn't really it, it's apparently didn't I, do much for anybody because that show ended as soon as it started <laughs> I think, actually I think it landed I think it lasted two I thought it lasted two seasons for some reason oh did it I thought it was only a season I, I might act you know what I have a Netflix a tab open of ne of Netflix I know it's on there I, I I gotta know how long this show lasted it may it may only be one uh, yeah two seasons two seasons two seasons there. I gotta go check it out I'll yeah, have to check I, it out. I, I love me some I've, string theory. Yeah, it's been a show that I've wanted to go and like and check out from time to time. Uh, I I because I, I want to say J.J. Abrams and the sort of the regular you know the the, the sci that crew. Yeah, it's sort of involved with that one too, uh, Kiefer Sutherland. But so it remind like I there there was a lot of that except this one is a little bit more with uh, like multiverse, yeah. the theory. So if so, comic book fans I think would find that aspect of it interesting especially you know if you're into that to that like alternate universe and the idea of like each action creates a multiple uh, other dimensions and universes and, and that there are other dimensions that can access uh certain times and and, I, and this still i think this is still spoiler free territory but yeah if you're into that kind of stuff this is definitely i think this is definitely a show that will resonate with you if you are not into that if you need like I need a very clear protagonist, antagonist, plot. This is not your, this is not your and, story. And all your loose ends tied up, like, or even yeah. a major, like, this leaves more ends untied than Lost, Lost. did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, if, if Lost pissed you off really badly for, for that reason, then yeah, yeah. This absolutely. is not your show. Turn around. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait and see if they do make a second season of this and see if they tie a bunch of strings up or whatever because the first season is just a complete mind fuck of yeah. what, like you're not sure what's happening at any given moment. You think you know and then you don't know and you think, like the first episode, okay, well, now we're going to get, we're, all right, yeah, spoilers. Plenty, there's plenty of spoilers. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah. That first episode. So here's my experience watching the show. Like that, my friend told me that, like messaged me that and I was like, okay, I'm going to check this show out. I had mentioned to Jenny, I was like, hey, you know, some so-and-so mentioned that they thought we, I might like the show. Do you want to watch it? And she was like, man, I guess, sure, I'll watch Watch it with you so jenny was doing something i went downstairs and i started watching it by myself for some reason i don't know why but i did knowing that she was going to want to watch it too but i watched it anyway All right and i started late like i started at like nine ten o'clock at night right the first episode goes for what like 40 45 minutes before you get into the story where they show the name of the show, you like you normally like within the first like three to five minutes, it's like, and this is the name of the show. This tells this huge, long 40, 45 minute prologue. And then it's like, and now we're going to start the show. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, what the hell am I watching? Like I was hooked. Like that's such a creative use of the net. Like knowing that people are going to binge this show. 
Like they're not limited to like that whole paradigm of like, well, we got to fit this into the first, you know, uh, commercial break. And we got to tell the, this little bit of the story in the first commercial break, because who knows if people will come back or whatever. They just tell the story in the pacing that they needed to tell it in. And it hooked me. That first episode hooked me so hard when she's like, I was born in 1985 in Russia. I was like, what? are you talking about like it had me so hard i binged four i binged let's see how many episodes are there's eight episodes in the season yeah i watched the first half of the season. i was up till two o'clock in the morning watching that show i had to force myself to go to bed i took melatonin and forced myself to go to bed because i was like i will stay up all night and watch this stupid show. It'll be six o'clock in the morning and I'll just be finishing it and I'll have to get up and go to work otherwise. And that's not going to be okay. Like I got to stop. I, it had me hooked, hooked yeah. so hard. So I get up the next day and I tell Jenny, I'm like, Jenny, I started watching the OA and she's like, I wanted to watch that with you. And I was like, I will totally start over to watch this show again. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I was just like, I need to start over anyway because I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> I was like, just watch it. Just watch it. So we did. We And then we spent the next two days binging it. We watched four episodes together the first night, then the final four episodes the next night. And um, I think she and I had very different opinions of the show. Because it's a very divisive show. Because it's like you said, it's one of those shows where like either you are totally into it or you're like, this was a fucking waste of time because they told me nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I mean, it's 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 fascinating. I, I I'm totally into that, that uh, that sort of supernatural metaphysical type story. Yeah. And. Uh, I, I thought the characters were fascinating. The thing that's messing with me is who were real characters or not. Uh, you know, your, your protagonist is definitely like, he, there's plenty of doubts as far as her identity and who she really is. Cause you know, there are, there's their mental issues. And if yeah, is she it, sane? Is she who she says she is? I so so so, so what, to, to, let, let me ask you a question. Let me just ask yeah. you a question. Do you think Prairie is sane? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's such a hard question to answer because I've been going over that since I since we finished the series, and I'm like, does it matter? Yeah, I, yeah, I, that's, I think that's I think where she I'm may at. I think she may be both. I think she may be the OA, and I think she may be sane. It may be insane at well, the same I, time. I don't see the thing is I think is she sane? Isn't is it? I, it's it's funny because it, it's an important question, but it's not because the thing is I do believe the show proved that her premonitions are real. So for premonition, if you believe her stories, the only premonition that is real that we know is real is the final one. Is the school shooting? No, yeah, yeah. we're going into disclose. yeah. That's but the then, only thing we know for sure is true. But the thing is, we do know that she had a premonition, and she realizes for, there's there's no there's no point that she should be able to know that. This is the moment that the school shooting is happening and she should be running to to stop the event. So right. Well, there is that, a scene there is a scene earlier with uh, the teacher where in the back. So so there's a couple things about this. So the the therapist says to her, you may not be you know, you may not be crazy. Your premonitions may be you just like are. There's no such thing as ESP or whatever. You're just taking in information, processing it differently than everybody else, right? Right. So there's That's that the, scene. The FBI counselor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then there's a so scene. One, by the way. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then there's the scene with um, with the teacher, and in the background, there's a news report of a school shooting that Prairie hears in the background. So is it just her processing that data and figuring out, holy shit, I bet, you know, there's going to be a copycat or whatever. Cause yeah, but that still doesn't, that still doesn't, that still doesn't, it doesn't get the, it doesn't get the perfect answer, but it is a question. Yes, but, but it, but it does, it doesn't, 
it, there's no way that her, like, okay, there might be a copycat. Her knowing to when to run to the school, where, where does she get any indication that she needs to go to right. the school to right stop the school there. shooting? Right then and there, yeah. There's, and there's, there is nothing to indicate that. So I, I still believe there is, there is a uh, – the, the, me- the metaphysical aspect of it. Yes, you saw the books that she could have, that she could have used to kind of construct her story. Mm-hmm. Um, or were they th- placed there by the, guy, the FBI guy? He goes, what the fuck was he doing in her house? That, yeah, see, that also messes with me, too. Like, why is the guy in the house, you know? Uh, uh, and he's God. like, and he's and he just lets the kid off the hook for breaking and entering. He's just like, all right, well, let's just hug it out. Let's yeah. go. Like, yeah. Well, that's so weird. <laughs> and, and, and there, there, there are other moments with Prairie that are also, or the OA, that are also very important. Like, her ability to calm down the dog, you know. when By she biting hugs, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. When when she when she hugs Steve and like the the emotion he feels in that moment. And yes, you can add a psychological element to it, but he also feels in that moment that oh yeah, you're right. You did experience experience these things. You aren't full of uh, you, you know, you aren't full of it at that point. So that like I still feel there there is truth to that supernatural, spiritual, metaphysical whatever aspect of the story that it isn't totally fabricated and uh, man <laughs> i don't know what, what, what do you think i i yeah i, I mean i think that the, the truth lies somewhere in between like just like in real life i don't think that there do i you don't think there's any truth to the five movements mm. Mm. I think well, okay. So there's clues to make you believe that yes, there are. Yeah. Because um, I think I, there are. I think they are. I, I, I'm going to go with it and say that they are. I think it's, that it's too ridiculous not to make true. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Um, I think that when, like, once Prairie gets shot, right, and they're like helping her into the ambulance, and she's like, "Don't you understand? It worked." Right. And and she says earlier in the show that, you know, it's like stepping into a a river and, you know, you just don't know where it's going to go. And, you know, um, Hab talks about there being a whooshing sound, you know, when when people leave their bodies, you hear the whooshing sound sound and you hear sort of a river sound along with that as she's driven off. And Steve running after her is like, no, it's happening. Take me with you. Um, and she says, you know, the first thing that when she goes and sees the teacher, whose name I can never remember, uh, Phyllis, uh, he says, she says about Steve that he's very sensitive, she f- that he feels the whole universe ripping itself apart. And he's sensitive and he can sense all this stuff. And that's why he's so angry. Right. Um, and so it makes sense that he would be the one to connect and realize, oh, no, she's leaving. She's being taken away if it is real. It could also be completely in their heads. <laughs> it could completely be in their heads. And the only reason that the five movements worked is because it brings them together. Well, no, because what the hell is going like the shock factor? <laughs> well, well, I mean, one thing that is important about like all these characters are people are characters who are very alone in their own struggles. And in the course of the series, they all kind of come together in the same way that uh, you know the 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 people in the basement. They kind of come together through the five the five move. You know five movements as well. Um, uh, yeah, they're all bro- they're all broken people with their own psychoses, right? Yeah, right. So it also makes them more susceptible to believe in something as crazy as her being the the OA and the, the five original. movements. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm inclined it, to believe that she is. And I think she is too. Yeah. I think she is too. And I think the near death experiences, cause she says, you know, she says, you know, sometimes there can be amnesia associated with the near death experiences. So they may be true, but there may be big pieces of it missing. And she's filling in the holes with this fiction to kind of help it make sense to her too. 
and and she could and the and the NDE could also have I mean she could just be plain old crazy and still be the OA. Like the idea of um us being these otherworldly beings and choosing to come into reality to experience life is nothing new. Like this has been going on in Hinduism and Far East religions for for as long as anybody can remember. Right. This and, idea. It, and, and it is a present in Western religions, but it's very It's hidden now. Yeah, like exactly. we've really suppressed uh, the Christian uh, Eastern religion, even though it would have been heavily influenced originally by Eastern religions in Jesus's time, we've yeah. kind of pushed that all aside and like kind of buried a lot of that and, and right. reinterpreted it and, and forgotten to tell, teach those verses in church nowadays. Uh, but it, it is there. It is a big part of Christianity as well. Um, but it, so it's 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 a big part of, of who we identify as. Like it resonates with a lot of people. It resonates with me. Like even modern game theory kind of like resonates off of this idea of like no 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 like we're just avatars for something else that you know is playing this game in this what we call reality. But it's just a you know we're we're either NPCs or PCs of of you know some larger idea that's that's pulling the strings. Um, right. So I, I think like it makes sense for us. And it makes sense for this show to kind of like reinterpret that and, and wrestle with some of these ideas of like, where do we where do we go when we die? And if we right. did choose yeah, to come here, what do we remember? And it's not just where do we go when we die? How do, what are our other states of existence? I think is what, yes. what I think is a very important aspect of the show, because it's not like there's an interesting moment where you do have um, I, I, I forget Phyllis Smith's character as well. Phyllis from The Office. Uh, but um, uh, her her name. But she talks about how she does believe that there is a heaven and that there is angels and right. And, after. and does this mean that it, it's a different thing? And she and you know uh, the OA is very you know uh, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't know if that's this, but this is something else. But I think there's there's a I, I love their depiction of like sort of that the void, the that 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 the cr- in between. That, that, yeah, the, the, the in between of all those dimensions, like I every, like every time that she entered that, like I was totally into it. And, and and this idea of sort of the choice to to opt out of existence and go into peace, um, or the choice to continue a life that is filled with pain. But there is choice and there is an impact you can make and that there's still a draw to be with other people, that that draw is so strong that we are willing to experience pain. I I was having a discussion with my brother about the whole, you know, the mythology of the Garden of Eden, you know, like, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, I I, I, I'm when when you have a story that has uh, an item called. (laughs) <laughs> an object called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Like that, that's fair. That, that's that, that becomes a, like a parable very quickly to me, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. but, yes. You would think people would see that. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty you know, obvious. And, and it, it's fine. If so, you know, I like, if, if you want to believe that, that it was literal events, that's fine. You know, I, for, for me, it feels, it, it's more of how we rationalize why we feel pain, why we are in this struggle that we call life. You know that are that the ch- the the choice to not have the knowledge of good and evil is to let uh, another being determine justice for us, to let us live in peaceful ignorance and bliss. But the choice to take on life, to take on those choices and those challenges, to have the relationships, that the cost of having these relationships and to be with others is to have this conflict. You know. Is is very much like I, I think a part of what that like that 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 it's a very I think it's a smaller moment of this series than or maybe it's a bigger part of the series than than I'm giving it credit for but I that I've always felt that that's sort of like what you know life is but there's also like what what I there was there was a quote that I like I had to write down because I was like I like I just thought this was amazing but um there. I forgot who it was who asked Prairie or, or what, or if, I think it was a, a, a conversation between Prairie and the FBI counsel, Riz Ahmed's um, character, but the whole idea about the future being dark. 
mm-hmm. but not dark in a bad way. Mm-hmm. It's it's just dark. Unknown. It's just hard to yeah. It's hard to see. But that living is about bringing life, uh, and is about living is about bringing light. Like that, the idea of light being life, and darkness being unknown instead of evil is a very interpretation of our existence and the conflict that is life. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that was really, really good. I, I, I picked up on that too. It does such a great job of wrestling with metaphysical ideas and not giving answers because we don't have answers. You know, the great the thing that I love about wrestling with metaphysical ideas is not getting answers. I love I love just the process of questioning the process of I'm not sure what like and not really coming to any ideas but saying like well this is what I believe right now tomorrow maybe a completely different feeling and a completely different idea I we've become so obsessed in our culture with definitively knowing something with uh being right about everything I love the idea that this show has where it doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to have a definitive answer. Um, And I think that, you know, it it reminded me of so many different stories that I've heard over the years as I've kind of like gotten into this stuff. There's one that I always come back to that freaks me out. And I try so hard to see if my kids will, will do it someday. And I think they're going to, they've gotten too old for it now. Um, I think that, I forget who told the story, but they were at a party and this guy has two kids and one is like five years old and the other kid is like one and a half, two years old, like just kind of started to talk or whatever. And it's time for the kids to go to bed and everybody, you know, they send them up to the room, brush your teeth and send them up to the rooms. This guy has to go to the bathroom. And so he's walking down the hallway uh, past the kids' bedrooms and he hears the kids talking and and the one the older kid is talking to the younger kid and the older kid is saying to the younger kid he says i don't remember where i was before you you still remember tell me again what it was like and that freaks me out so bad i'm like (laughs) what (laughs) are you kidding me like that's such a like such a mind fuck of like oh no no there there's something before this and i'm starting to forget it i can't remember it anymore and and maybe that's what reality is and that's what's happening to prairie is she's as she's being torn back and or choosing to come back into our reality she, that amnesia is her forgetting the details of where she came from and where we came from as well and choosing our life here and trying to like make make something of it and, and you know maybe this is like a, a vacation resort and that's you know it's kind of like a west world idea of like yeah we just come down into this reality and we play this silly game and when we die we go back to wherever you know it is that we came from and it's all good and fun and you know we just come down and it's like at this time i'm gonna be a middle-aged white guy with two kids and you know whatever <laughs> and next time i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna learn about suffering and i'm gonna you know do whatever and, you know that, that again going back to a lot of eastern religion and and new age ideas of how the universe works but i s- still find it just incredibly fascinating yeah absolutely I, man yeah that story that story's such a mind fuck <laughs> <laughs> it really is i mean it's also tough because i i finished it only a couple hours ago so you know i'm still kind of in the middle of of the story in yeah. some ways yeah yeah uh, so I just I just read, though, that the the producers do have ideas or plans for a second season. I have mixed feelings about that. I think, you know, there's something really special about this season in the fact that it doesn't answer any questions. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, and it leaves the door wide open for interpretation. You know, half the people who watch the show think she's batshit crazy and had not like there was nothing to it. The other half think oh yeah this makes total sense she is the OA and and it was all true and and whatever and then there's you and me in the middle going yeah maybe this is true maybe this isn't true and it doesn't really matter and I'm sure there's other people out there that feel the same way 
The yeah. problem well, with having more, this is true. I, I, I think I'm definitely more. Yeah, that. you're falling. You're falling in the this is true camp. Yeah, uh, I, I think so. I don't think all of it's true. I yeah. think I think like a I think like a good fifty to seventy five percent of it's not true. So do you think she is? So she. Do you think uh, Hap is is like she was just a, completely abused, but and that Hap wasn't trying to find this because because Hap is an inter- a very interesting character for me too, uh, which uh, Jason Isaacs I like he is he plays great villains again and again you know like the, the typical like oh you know you want your elegant British villain he is great at that he will yeah. he was uh, he voiced the uh, the Sith Inquisitor for uh, the first season of Rebels. And he was uh, the the main bad guy in the Patriot. I I love when he shows up as a villain, but he there was definitely another like he brought a really interesting energy to this to this bad guy. You know he's clearly a bad guy. There, there's not there's not really much of a question of it, but there is sort of a noble sense of scientific discovery to him that isn't selfish, you know. Um, yeah, he's doing horrible, horrible things in the name of science. Yeah. And I think, like, it's it's a great kind of, There's so much going on in this, this show that's just sort of a commentary about things of, like, you know, this... He's the, he's the embodiment of scientific thought run amok. Right. You know, of, of gone too far, of, like, the ends justify the means. It doesn't matter who you kill, torture, or whatever. As long as you get the results, it's going to help the greater good. Right. Well, but it, what's interesting is that distinction, though, for the greater good, because you do have them come across, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, a colleague who is doing the same investigation that he's doing, but is interested in the profit, and as soon as he finds out about some of some of Hap's progress, is willing to kill him, you know. And I I, I think it's a very fascinating distinction, like it, because for a guy that at, up until that point you've seen terrible him do terrible things, like I was rooting for him to stay alive in that moment, you know. Did you find yourself? Yes, yeah. yes, because you well only because you knew that. Are that Prairie would die if the other guy, <laughs> yeah, fair enough, made made you know got his way, not yeah. because Hap was a good guy or was doing anything good. I mean, he had moments of humanity, but they were really like self serving. Absolutely, uh, uh, you know, there really was no redeeming quality to this guy, right. which is an interesting comment. Like you know, for a show that's talking about, you know, it's an interesting character. Like it's really kind of damning the scientific community of, listen, you guys are so focused on right and wrong and getting your results and knowing everything that you're missing life. You're you know you're missing the point of it all. You right, because because I because at the end of the day, I think the point is being with others. Yes, and he is, having he is that character. relationship. Yeah, right. And he's a character that is so alone that because he is so focused on a goal instead of um, instead of the relationships that he should be building, experiencing and, life. Yeah, right. Because like he, you know, Prairie, you know, says she doesn't. They have no physical contact with any of the other prisoners for the seven years that they were in there, but she still falls in love with Homer. Whereas, you know, there is no relationships in Hap's life. None. Right. You know, and he has he he's he's got it all going for him, but he has no human connection despite all of that. So I, I, you're right. He is a fascinating character. I hadn't really thought much about it until you brought it up, but I do think like he is, it's a commentary on, on what the producers think about, uh, you know, science run amok, run amok, science yeah. going too far and, and kind of missing the point of just being in a quest of a, being able to answer questions and not be, and missing the point because we have come to this weird point in our society and our culture as a whole, where there's like, there's this huge division between science and religion. Right. And, you know, like, you know, each side wants to be right. You know, but going back to our, our many discussions about Jedi and Sith, you know, each side being this opposing view and, and this extreme view of the other. 
when in reality, up until even a couple hundred years ago, science and religion were intertwined together and they were working together to try and answer the same common questions instead of trying to be the first to and and being the only one to answer those questions. They were working right. hand in hand. And that hasn't obviously happened perfectly. For, I mean, you know, Galileo well, is a perfect, not just, perfect example. Not just science and religion, but art was also very much a part of it, which right. I also thought was a very interesting part of this series with the way music and dance with the five movements are part of sort of this idea of interdimensional travel and creating this 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 bond like the fact that they all sort of experienced that same tune was one of the things that i th i thought was one of the most amazing aspects of this story um in what way well th th like that i think that uh, well for me i thought it was like that was one of the things that convinced me oh yeah the metaphysical part of this is true but this this sort of like this this that that tune was sort of an expression of the connection that we all have that even though they all had slightly different talents in different ways, you know, like, uh, I, f I forgot the, the name of the guy with dreads, but like he was able to speak to plants, you know, and all, all, all of them creating sort of, it, 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 for me, it was sort of like this idea of each person contributing a, a different part to us, to this song to create, to create a greater song. And, that's what the nature of a relationship, the, 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 the actualized version of a relationship, the transcendent part of, of it is. That's what makes, you know, music is, is math and art. It's not just, it's not one or the other, mm -hmm. you know, and there's beauty in that. And that I felt that that was an expression of that idea of that this is not just, you know, s spirituality, but spirituality and science, um, and the two of them coming together uh, for to create a relationship. Like, absolutely, there, you can't explain the way we think in a scientific way, but you, you can't divorce yourself from the spiritual aspect of what a soul brings to our relationship and who we are and our identities um, as well. Because we are more, because I do believe we are more than just, you know, organisms and cells, that there is, there is such a thing as a soul that hasn't been quantified by science. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's been a Chlorian. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, this show is fantastic. Like, I can't remember a show that I can't think of another show that that wrestled with these ideas in such a compelling way, or even wrestled with these ideas, much less make it compelling. Like, this is a topic that can be very quickly, very boring and very dry and very, like, uh, frou-frou and new-agey right. and stupid. And they were very effective in making it compelling because they didn't show their hand right, right. off the bat. And even up to well, the this, end, like, it leaves me guessing. Easily, this very easily could have been Lady in the Water <laughs> when, when, you, when you're talking uh, about your Shyamalan comparison. Right, yeah. <laughs> Right, which was so heavy-handed and stupid yeah. that it, it failed completely. This is the exact opposite of that, where it just fantastically do weaves this tale, where as she's telling it, like she, it, it, it very slowly breaks you, sucks you into this realm of like, well, okay, I guess that's possible. Okay. I guess that's possible too. And next thing you know, like, oh yeah, yeah, she's probably an angel. <laughs> You're like what? <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's told like it's told so well and that's what makes this story really fascinating and also like if you don't believe she's an angel it also makes it terrifying. Like it's also right. a commentary of like how people get sucked into cults. You know. Yes. <laughs> yes, very much so. Like it could very easily be that tale as well where this girl is just nuts and has sucked these poor people into believing this crazy tale. Now it ends up working to their benefit, you know, and, and good comes out of it, but there still could very well easily be in a cult, you know? You know I wonder so so I, I'm I'm looking up a couple things like um uh, like you know, is there going to be a second season for the yeah. show? Yeah, and that's where I saw that they they've talked about. Um, yeah, they they said they they do have ideas and plans for for it. Do you um, want to see a second season? I mean, the thing is, it's hard to imagine that they can contribute anything more to this 
to this idea, but if they can in a meaningful way, um, I mean, so, so I, 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 I see, I, I see on the surface, it's very easy to say, no, I don't want any more because I like the open endedness and the ability to discuss and like the nature of what we've seen. So yes, far. yes, uh, because I feel like automatically you add a second season you know, the, it, that, that it, let's say this, let's say this isn't like, you know, true detective or something where it's like, oh, right, we experience it from another perspective and it's still sort of ambiguous. Let, let's just say it is a continuation with these characters in this story and that, you know, we do find out Homer is real and the other four are still in the basement uh, of, of Hap's home. Um, can you still have the ambiguity and, discussion that we're still having if you can i absolutely think there there is space for this to still be meaningful and interesting especially if you take consequence from what we've seen happen so far like the the big event that was pre just prevented you know the school shooting and all if, if, if prevention of that has consequences that we haven't foreseen then I think, yes, I think there is more for this show to say. Um, so so th this is the, the thing. So Britt Marling, one of the show's creators, uh, and, and she is who plays Prairie, told Variety, she says, uh, w when they asked, when asked if they have plans for a second season, she says, oh, my goodness, that would be so much fun. We spent a good three years just cobbling the mathematics of the labyrinth of a mind bender that could go for many, many hours. If we get to be so lucky to, uh, to, to get another round, I'd be so excited. Uh, so excited and Zal Batmangli, the, uh, the other creator said, we, yes, we have designed it that way so that they could, so that they have plans for a second season, whether it happened or not is obviously up to Netflix. So it seems like they Netflix, do have Netflix has never greenlit a sec, like never not greenlit a second season. <laughs> so I mean, I think, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I've never heard them say, no, we're not going to do it. Um, right. So it sounds like they they will do it if they you know if if, if that's true that they actually have something else to say. Yeah, I agree with you. I, it, it, sort of. I don't want to see another season. Not because yeah. I didn't enjoy this. Not because it wasn't good. But I think that anything you do from this point forward answers questions or creates more problems with this season much in the same way like lost did where it's just like we're never going to answer questions we're never going to answer questions we're never going to answer questions you know where hmm, I, I don't know that i want that out like we've already had that and i don't know that i want that i'm, I'm really content with where they left this now that being said these are questions and, and ideas that have been wrestled with for thousands and thousands of years. Right. That's not, there, there certainly is the opportunity to continue to wrestle with them in a creative and fun way. I guess I'm into it, but I am really skeptical that they would be able to, uh, to do that. I, yeah, I just don't I, see I, it. And I, I feel I'm, I, I feel more skeptical as well. I, I, I totally agree with you on that. I think the, the, the best thing that they can do is say this is what – leave it at this. We can tell a different story of some sort, you know. Well, yeah, because – all right, so, so, so there's, there's, one, there's one of two ways to, to go with the story, right? Like it's true. Prairie – and they used the five movements and Prairie got to Homer. Right. She she did some sort of interdimensional travel and she's not with the original five anymore. So we just kind of drop their story and follow prairie or we stay with them prairies out of the picture and we deal with them kind of dealing with the remnants of prairie being gone right what happens there or it's bullshit and we have to deal with the remnants of it being bullshit like i don't know that any three of those options are particularly compelling, compelling to me yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather I'd rather not know and leave it up in my mind because whatever's going to happen, whatever I choose and whatever you choose to believe happens in this show and, and what really happened, interpret it, how what happened in the show is going to is going to be better than finding out we were right or wrong. Right. Like that's right. that's like I don't want to be hap. Like I don't yeah. want to make the same mistake that hap makes. I want to be content in not knowing. 
I right. think like that's that's one of the secrets of life as as I get older and, you know, as I'm, you know, sitting and, and unpacking the the room in my mind that has all of religion in it and all the stuff that I've picked over. You know, I know this for certain. I know that for certain. I know this for certain. I'm realizing, no, I don't know that for certain. I need to just get rid of that shit. Like, I don't know and I don't need to know. It's OK not knowing. We don't need to know everything. Sometimes it's better not to know and just be surprised when it happens. Right. The, the, the demand for certainty in our culture is such a, a driving force in everything that we do, especially when it comes to religion. You look at Christianity today and it's, you know, the whole idea of like, well, God said it, that settles it. You know, it's in the Bible. Therefore, it's true. Even though it says something completely opposite three chapters later. This is the verse that I'm interpreting right now and misinterpreting right now and taking out of context right now because this is what I need to know and hold on to right now. Like that scares me to death when people start talking about that and start using religion that way. Not that this is anything like that. Like this is not religion. Right? Like right, I, I would make right. that clear. But that mentality, though, is is pervasive in everything we do, and it's okay not to know. It's okay, like to just say this was a great season. It was a perfect season. Let's not fuck it up. Let's just right. let it be and let people remember it as a great season of television that caused people to think and question and debate and and either they loved it or they hated it, like my wife did. Uh, you know. That's okay. That's okay. We don't need to have answers. Right. Right. Wow. Man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I will say I, I was, you know, different show, but I, I was not, I, I lost, I lost interest in man in high castle after the first season. Not, not because like right after I watched it, I was like, Oh yeah, I could watch a second season of this, but it had been so long that I kind of lost the, the drive to watch a second season. But now that the second season's out, this show is actually making me want to watch that second season. This is also me too. That multi-dimensional. You me know, too. And I didn't. It. And I didn't get through the the entire first season. I only watched like the first three quarters of the first season, and then I stopped. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I wow. just it just kind of lost steam with me, where I was just like, yeah, I don't really, you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it, like it has made me want to go back and watch it, watch that, finish it up and catch up, especially now that season two is out as well. Yeah. Um, I'm here also hearing good things. What's the other name of the show? That uh, Travelers? The, the Travelers, yeah. I want to yeah, check Travelers that out, too. It feels a little bit more straightforward sci-fi, like, you know, yeah. people from the past are coming back to warn something, which yeah. I actually plan to start watching Potentially tonight, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Well, maybe tomorrow I'll yeah. start watching that. But uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's the next thing that's on my, my list to watch. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll if, if, if we feel it's compelling enough, I'm sure we'll do an episode about it. So <laughs> um, man, but yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm happy I watched this show. It, I am too. Extremely yeah. happy I watched it. Uh, and again, it's not a show for everybody. If you're yeah. not into metaphysical and you're in, not into unanswered questions and you're not into, uh, you know, big gaping possibilities of like maybe this happened, maybe it didn't, and just tons of unanswered questions and really no intention to answer those questions. It's not like it, like they're intentionally left blank. Like there's tons of uh, contradictions in yeah. this show. Absolutely. huge contradictions in the show and it's intentional it's not bad writing it's it's made to confuse you it's made to make you question reality and right. and what you're what you're witnessing and and it's if you're into that it's fantastic it is absolutely fantastic and we'd like to hear what your thoughts are you know where, where do you kind of fall along the the you know and the scale of like what the show is it did, did it you know is there truth to the metaphysical part is it truly made is it just made up is is that fine you know what does that mean what are the, the the repercussions of that kind of belief you know um and the nature of the relationships the nature of the characters let us know what you think about that just go to our website certainpov.com uh you can join the discussion on any of our social media sites you can comment on the page of our website uh and please feel you know please share this podcast with with any friends of yours uh and also if you'd like to be part of what we're doing on patreon you can be a part of that as well uh, again all of that is on our website certainpov.com and until next week stay scruffy my nerf herders thanks for listening to certain point of view don't miss an episode just subscribe rate and review the podcast on itunes head over to certainpov.com we